Hey everybody, I'm in Deep Cove on Vancouver Island shooting some seascapes tonight. Um, it's kind of, it's December, so we don't generally get a lot of sunny days here on the west coast, so I thought I'd take advantage of this and hope for a good sunset. The problem with landscape photography is you really never know what you're gonna get, so you just kinda have to head down and try to capture what you can, and maybe the sun will do something cool and maybe it won't, but we're gonna make do with what we've got today. There are two times of the day that are kind of the money zones for shooting landscape. One is sunrise and the other is sunset. And if you're like me and not a morning person, then you'd probably rather be in bed than out scrabbling on rocks looking for good shots. So <laughs> I'm here at sunset and there's kind of three parts of sunset that you should be aware of. One is magic hour, which is basically the hour before sunset. So I usually try to get to a location during magic hour because the light is golden and nice and that's when you get a really low sun and you can shoot silhouettes and, and really get that light. And then obviously sunset and you can get the sun just sort of coming down onto the horizon and you get that big explosion of color. And then the other is sort of right after sunset happens, it kind of gets better and better and better. And there are so many times where I thought a sunset was done and I just left. Because I'm like, ah, oh, can't get any better. And it got better. And I was in my car and I just, yeah, I felt like a donkey. Because <laughs> <laughs> I miss the best part of the sunset. And I guess there's a, actually a, a time after a sunset called blue hour where it's not quite dark, but you get this beautiful blue of the sky and you can shoot um, some long exposures of stars. And there's lots of things. So I think if, if you're heading out to do a sunset, then make sure you're kind of covering your basis and capturing everything that you've got in that location because you really don't know how the sky is gonna transform during the whole sunset period. Now, I am going to try to look for a shot just as the sun's setting and then after it's set to get, hoping to get some colors in these clouds above me. It's not a lot of clouds, but I know from the past that sometimes a shot that I think is bad when I'm doing it, I can, I can do a lot in post to improve it and make it a really cool shot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just walk along this coast and try to find something interesting, like an interesting rock formation or um, just the way the water's coming in, maybe there's something cool. I kind of, I don't really know right now exactly where I want to shoot, so I'm just gonna head off and try to find something cool. So one of the secrets of taking seascape photos is getting really, really, really low. And that usually means your bum's gonna get wet. <laughs> I'm sitting on barnacles right now. It's really comfortable. <laughs> Anyways, I, I kind of walked along the beach and I found this spot. I don't know, it's kind of, there's a lot of different things going on here. And I chose this spot because I love these rocks here with the seaweed on them. And um, I actually took a similar shot in Hawaii a couple months ago. As you know, the, the sea and the sky are kind of blah right now. There's, they're kind of monotone and not really doing anything exciting. So having that green seaweed in there really kind of pops in the photo. Also there, um, the rocks are black and they're kind of uh, shell debris all around them. This kind of white stuff that looks really cool. It kind of shows up on the photo. So I have a circular polarizer on here. Um, that's gonna help cut down on the reflection and um, I'm using the 16 to 35 because I want to shoot fairly wide um, I've got kind of a nice curve of the of the water line come kind of coming into the shot and then I have the rocks kind of placed sort of in the middle here I took sort of one at 16 one at uh, 24 and that gives you kind of a different perspective and it's something that I often do 
when I'm shooting a shot like this where I'm not 100% sure on the end results. So I'm gonna play with different framings. As far as my camera settings, I'm doing an exposure of about one to two seconds. I'm kind of playing around with uh, different lengths to get different amounts of movement in the water. There aren't a lot of waves here, so it's fairly flat and anything longer than a one second and it's just almost completely flat. There's no movement. Um, I'm shooting at f18, from f18 to f22, depending on how long an exposure I want. And I've got the ISO set all the way down to 100. Um, I forgot my remote. <laughs> I always do. I always forget it. So I, I'm using the sneaky trick of setting the timer on my camera to two seconds. So I hit the, I hit the shutter and I wait two seconds and it takes the picture. So I'm, I'm not gonna get a lot of shape. Um, but be, being prepared, it's a lesson I continue, <laughs> continue to learn on a daily basis. So I've taken a lot of shots from this angle. I think I'm gonna switch it up. The sun hasn't even set yet. I've kind of got this line of um, hills behind me and the sun hasn't even reached the horizon yet. So it's kind of still got that muddy gray quality to it. And if I wait maybe half an hour more, I might see a lot of light. So this is a time where you just have to persevere because color is coming. It's gonna come behind those clouds, <laughs> fingers crossed. So I might find a different location and, and shoot that. Because my bum is so wet. <laughs> so good things come to those who wait for nice sunsets. So I waited till the bitter end and I'm finally getting some beautiful pinks and purples in the sky and I'm really excited. I found this barnacle covered branch just floating here and um, I've been kind of moving around and getting low and trying different angles to try to get a cool shot of, of the branch and then the beautiful sunset behind it. And as I'm doing this, the tide is going out, so I'm really racing against the clock. I'm actually shooting three exposures um, because it's really, really dark in this area. So um, I might merge them into an ATR. I might composite some parts and mask some parts in. Um, it's really dark here, it's really bright here. So I'm shooting three exposures, about one and a half um, apart. Make sure I get this shot. Nice. Yeah, I think I've got the right angle. I got kind of low enough and it's, I've positioned myself so that the, the branch is in between these two rocks. Um, you always have to watch your foreground that it's not getting blocked by other dark objects. So I kind of want this branch to be right in the middle of the water so it really stands out and then the sky is right behind it. <sighs> okay. <laughs> That was a race to the finish. It's always like that at the very end. You kind of think, ah, uh, I haven't gotten the shot, I haven't got the shot, and then boom, the sky comes up and you've literally got five minutes. So I think I, I think I got something cool. 